So there's been a lot of buzz about um, intermittent fasting and um, the impact on biology and longevity. <clears throat> what's, what's all that buzz about? Uh, who's creating it? And is there any reality to it? Uh, I will tell you this. There is reality. There is a lot of buzz. A lot of things came out just over the past six months. It's building on information that we've known for five to ten years regarding genetics and um, <clears throat> caloric restriction. Um, and guess what else? It also gets back to mTOR, AMPK, PKA, those same metabolic pathways that we talked about with metformin. Again, type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, does appear to be our genetically programmed way of getting old. Now let's go back and, and get a little bit deeper on what we were talking about. So this is the BBC News. Uh, BBC. Um, I hope you've heard of them. Fasting diet regenerates diabetic pancreas. And they're talking about Walter Longo and his research. And yes, he did. Um, here's Forbes magazine here in the U.S. A lot of you uh, know Forbes. Could a little bit of fasting bring a lot of health benefits? Again, that's about Walter Longo and <clears throat> the information we're getting ready to cover. Now, this is, you know, I mentioned we've known for five or ten years or more that basic caloric restriction has a positive impact on longevity. And they've shown that in several different animal models from mice to monkeys um, and a lot, Drosophila, fruit flies, worms, <clears throat> you name it. But now we're starting to talk about intermittent fasting. This and this fellow's name is Walter Longo, uh, Walter with a V. As you see, he's at UC Davis, um, uh, USC Davis, University of Southern California. He may be the world's number one biogeneticist uh, focusing on longevity or gerontology, whichever one you want to call it. <clears throat> He's done some research. Fasting mimicking diet reverses diabetes in mice. So here's what he did. <clears throat> oh, here's the article, by the way. Um, it was published, I believe, in Cell Magazine. Fairly hard science magazine that, uh, yeah, Cell, that uh, gets fairly deep into uh, biochemistry and the metabolic pathways of our cells. Fasting mimicking diet promotes NGN3 driven beta cell regeneration of reverse, uh, to reverse diabetes. <clears throat> and so he goes through the details, but here is the basic image of what happened. There are ways to knock out the beta cells in a mouse pancreas. It's called, one of them is called an, an injection of a chemical called streptozosin or streptozosin, depending on how you pronounce it. So they did that with these mice. And so these mice were just like human diabetics. They had high glucose. And you test them on a glucometer and their glucose numbers were high. Then they did an intermittent uh, or the, uh, fasting mimicking diet. There were stem, stem cell uh, increase and they actually remade the beta cells of the pancreas. The, the mice uh, were cured of their diabetes. Well, obviously, the big question is, can we do that with humans as well? <clears throat> so I've been doing a couple of, um, of unboxing videos. I'm testing that product. It was developed by Walter Longo. He is... Um, by the way, not making any money off of this product. I guess if he's making any money, it's probably at consulting because you tend to not make very much money as a researcher either. Um, so, 
What else does the science tell us about this? Um, again, another article by Longo and some other folks. Basically, this article is looking at other things besides just this, uh, all these headlines about reversing diabetes. Again, I personally am a little bit skeptical about permanent reversal of diabetes. I don't have a doubt that they saw what they saw with um, reversal of those beta cells. I do, however, uh, suspect that um, it's not going to be as long term as, as we think. And I suspect that for genetic reasons. However, you know, maybe there's a mechanism where we can just continually repeat uh, intermittent fasting. Um, fasting episodes. That's assuming all of this works in humans, and, and that's a huge jump, but that's what people are excited about. Let's look at something other than uh, diabetes, though. This is looking, again, this is by Walter Longo. It's really more of a review article, um, also in an academic journal, peer-reviewed. And his point behind that is that there are multiple ways that um, of obesity or uh, adipose or fat t tissues impact, negatively impact our metabolism. Um, they cause uh, problems with increased uh, intermittent uh, insulin-like growth factor one, causing increase in insulin. Um, that increases uh, tends to increase blood glucose levels tends to increase inflammation, um, has an impact on uh, AMPK and mTOR, and again, we're going right back to um, verse 73 of <laughs> slowing down the metabolic uh, pathways. Now, <clears throat> here's an interesting article, and it a answers the question. The next question that comes up is, so if that's actually happening, What's the mechanism? Well, <clears throat> this article was written by someone else. I'm sure that uh, Longo's community is totally in touch with this. This is talking about a couple of different um, translation and transcription pathways are involved and impacted by fasting. So... <clears throat> Basically, what this is saying is this. They've taken yeast, they've taken uh, mice models as well, they've uh, restricted uh, calorie input, and they've seen significant changes. There are a couple of uh, different mechanisms for doing that. One is called P53. Another one is called FOXO. Both of these mechanisms are decreasing, excuse me, they are increasing the um, transcription of the genes which cause um, development of these metabolic hormones. Again, mTOR, AMPK pathway, several of those uh, molecules involved in our metabolic pathways. So in other words, here's another way to look at it. Let's get back up to 50,000 feet. Basically what it's showing is this. Um, Episodes of caloric restriction have an impact on our genetics in terms of, not the changing our genetics, but in terms of our transcription. In other words, which uh, molecules, which proteins, which enzymes we create from our genes. If we go through periods of uh, fasting, our genes start transcribing the metabolic uh, components, the components to increase our metabolism. Well, you know what? That sort of makes sense, doesn't it? At the end of the day, if, we're, if we continue to have no episodes of, uh, of caloric restriction, our body's not going to get any genetic signals to increase our uh, metabolic profile. Very interesting information.